What's up, soldiers? Curse here, CaribbeanPod.com vibes it up in the kitchen, you know? Let's hope we just do it. Tasty Tuesday, July month of grilling is continuing. It's all kind of nice things outside of it that flame and fire and smoke, as I keep saying. Uh, your boy love it, what can I say? We're driving through, we were on our way from Montego Bay to the grill, stopped off at a spot, had some wicked Escovich fish. Watch now. Jamaicans, all they really know how to rock the escovich. In this recipe today, I'm going to show you guys how to do something very similar, but instead of frying the fish as they traditionally do in Jamaica, we're going to do it outside on the grill. You're going to love this one, man. We had, a, I had a, Basically, this recipe comes from a request I had on Twitter, so hook me up on Twitter if you haven't done so already, and send in your request. I can't remember the person's name who sent it in, but they're like, Chris, we need more fish, boss. Hook me up, huh? So the first thing we want to do is to make the sort of escovitch dressing that we're going to put over the grilled fish because I want this to marinate and to sit and to let all those flavors come together for about half an hour or so in the fridge. And I've got here a couple scallions. Well, first in my bowl here, I don't know if you guys can see that. I've got about five allspice berries um, in the bowl. I've got a couple scallions that I chopped up, some red onions thinly sliced. And this here is something, my little personal touch, some thinly sliced celery. Now for that escovitch to have some nice heat and some nice kick, again some thinly sliced scotch bonnet pepper. No seeds, you can see all that seed is still in there and the sort of white membrane, that's where that raw heat is gonna be. If you want this to be even more hot, you can go in with more of that scotch bonnet pepper. Totally up to you. Some sea salt. And this is that sea salt I got in the mail, the Anguilla stuff. With a nice dose of that sea salt. And I'm gonna go in with a nice dose of fresh ground black pepper as well. Friends, it seems as though I didn't have the uh, camera going. What I went in with was half of a shallot that I chopped up finely just to give it a sort of an onion, sort of garlic sort of flavor in there. I went in with the juice of one lemon as well as white, just plain old white vinegar as well as half a teaspoon of white sugar. All I'm gonna do now is mix that, put it in the fridge, put some plastic wrap over that, and let that sit for about half an hour in the fridge. Wanna give it a good mix. That the acid is gonna help bring everything together, as well as the sugar is gonna help balance the flavors. You can use bigger red snapper or any sort of um, ocean fish that you like. I mean, you see, I've got smaller red snapper here, and that's what I'm doing. They're nice and clean all the way through. And the first thing I want to do, actually, we'll use one of these as an example. So, um, just put these aside. First thing I'm going to do is give it a couple cuts on both sides. And that's just to help it cook all the way through. And then later on, when we go with that sort of escovitch dressing after we're done grilling, it's going to help to go in inside there and add all kind of nice flavors. I've got here the whites from the scallions that when we were making the escovitch dressing just gonna cut it up into strips. Just gonna soften it up a little bit. So I'm gonna take a couple of those. I've got a couple of sprigs of thyme and I've got the leaves from the uh, from the celery. So I'm just gonna take that, put it into the cavity of the fish just to season it up just a little bit. And then <clears throat> Just before I'm ready to get these onto the grill, what I'm going to do is drizzle on some olive oil on here just so it doesn't stick to the grate of the, um, the grill. And I'm going to go some sea salt and some fresh ground black pepper on both sides. That's it. We're going to get a ton of flavor from that escovitch dressing. So pretty much on both sides. I'm just going to flip it over after and do both sides. So fresh ground black pepper sea salt and if you want you can also go into the cavity with some of this before you put those those herbs in there and 
and drizzle on a bit of that olive oil. Get ready to grill. Basically, all you're doing is grilling the fish as you would normally do. I want to get this nice and charred on the outside a bit, so I'm doing it over direct heat. Now, that is totally up to you. What you want to do is, I mean, this is your thing. Four or five minutes on each side, these will be perfectly done. Take the marinade out of the fridge, out of the fridge, so it, it comes to room temperature. We don't want it cold. It will start to stick to the, uh, the grill. This is why it's important to oil your grill. And notice that split there, that means the fish is starting to cook all the way through. A couple more minutes, this will be perfect. As soon as it comes off the grill, this is when you're going to go in with that escovitch dressing that we made. And all you're going to do is pretty much pour it on while it's still warm. You want to get this as soon as it's still warm on that fish. And that's really going to brighten up all those flavors. Remember those cuts we made? All those lovely juices is going to go in there. Chris here, CaribbeanPod.com. Always a pleasure to have you guys here in the kitchen with me. Give this recipe a try. A little bit different than your typical escovitch. But I assure you, you guys are going to really love this one. In the next video, we've got a wicked gluten-free jerk chicken. Looking juicy, looking tempting. You're going to love this one, man.